The important point, though, is that Microsoft can't do everything when you're dealing with hybrid cloud, on-prem environments, and public cloud. And if you're going to be dealing with multi-cloud environments, you need to understand where third-party experts like Trend Micro can step in and provide a much more robust and secure environment that also makes the administration of security policies much easier when you go to multi-cloud. All right, Aaron, all yours. Thanks, Ron. Much appreciated. I'm going to start my timer here. And let's go in and talk to the audience about securing a multi-cloud environment. As Ron mentioned, my name is Aaron Ansari. I run the Cloud One conformity team for North America, so a lot of work that, that, that goes on between Trend Micro and the cloud providers. Uh, and a lot of visibility among our thousands of customers. Um, if you're not familiar with Trend Micro, we're a 30-year-old organization, tens of thousands of customers all over the world. So we have good visibility and good perspective into what's happening um, as it relates to the cloud piece of our customers' um, sort of usage and, and uh, environment. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what multi-cloud is. And and you know, I'm not putting up a definition here just to be pedantic or or you know, speak at an elementary level, but I, but I want to kind of set the tone of when we're referring to multi-cloud. It's not just somebody that has, you know, three, five, whatever major cloud providers. It, it can also be private clouds. It can also be some sort of hybrid environment where you've got an on-prem and cloud sort of uh, situation. And that on-prem component might have some sort of other cloud or virtual cloud uh, component to it. Um, so it's it's not just what, what some people traditionally think as having multiple cloud providers. Um, it, it can be a different bit or different set of, of the cloud environment. But the point behind it, outside of just what we're seeing from trend perspective, is that a large percentage, right, in this, this statistics with, with the source cited at the bottom, of, of enterprise companies and even non-enterprise, right, so what would be considered a medium business uh, size organization um, uses a, or has some sort of multi-cloud strategy. Meaning, if you go back to this definition, they're implementing some sort of version of, of, of this definition as, as they're going through and doing things. And, and you can see here that it relies on either public or private cloud. So with lots of organizations, odds are your organization having a multi-cloud sort of presence, um, why is that? Right? What's driving to this, this multi-cloud um, strategy across organizations? Well, we have a couple of customers and a couple of people that, that, that speak and, and tell us, and, and the answer varies, but the answer is still the same, right? 80% or a large percentage of organizations are in some sort of multi-cloud um, setup. And there's a reason, right? In this instance, the reason you know, is talking about the specificities or the value that comes with a particular cloud provider, as we just saw from Microsoft. There's value that comes with using the Azure service, and there's particular expertise that comes with certain components of the Azure services that, that are utilized and could be best utilized at your organization. And that makes sense, right? There's also competition, right? There's, there's uh, somebody that's perhaps in retail that doesn't want to compete with a large cloud provider that's in retail, and they want to, they, they want to use a different provider, which is fine. There's also diversity of business continuity and resiliency, right? You want to have multiple setups or different iterations of your environment from a disaster recovery or business continuity standpoint. Again, all these things make sense, but again, all of them add up to the fact that your organization is, is using um, public cloud. So again, on that same report, this is not my report, but on that same report, we see a large percentage of usage uh, across public cloud markets, right? Um, so there's either experimentation, there's production usage, or there's plans to use a certain cloud environment. And so here, here you see listed a large set of the, the cloud providers that are out there. And then you can see kind of where the market is or is going to head as it relates to, to usage. But so you layer on top that 80% of people are using multiple clouds, there's a migration to the cloud, there is usage and specificity that can come and value that, that comes with the cloud, right? Uh, so it makes sense to be able to say, okay, you know, something that, that's good for me here, artificial intelligence and machine learning, might not be so good for me here as it relates to Windows Server environments, right? So you've got that centralization that that's sort of, um, going away as it relates to the to the spreading out of your cloud services and your cloud environments that you're building. 
And it's no secret that that COVID has changed the way that we do things. I mean, Ron, you just talked about the fact that, you know, we're, we're doing this event virtually, right? Um, so there's a digital transformation that's coming as part of what, what's happened with, with, with COVID. And, and that's shifting everybody's business, right? Everybody's going to change the way that they, they adopt, do, and run, run their organization. So, you know, what does that mean, right? How can I abstract and how can I build my apps and my environments in a, in a particular in a particular manner? And more importantly, how can I build and adapt those applications to what's happening with the changes that are that are going on in the way that the world is and the way that we conduct business? Well, you don't want to be locked into something, right? If you're if you're locked into the architecture or the way that the, that an, or the, an application is designed, the abstraction of that organization organi of that application, remember I said, you know, business resiliency, continuity, um, becomes difficult, and becomes a challenge. So you have to be able to, to paint in a broad enough brushstroke that allows you to be able to implement your applications and implement your cloud environments in such a way uh, that they're secure, that they're safe, that they're visible, and that, that they're available, right? And so what are the concerns when, when moving to or going to a multi-cloud environment? Well, cross-functionality is something that we already talked about, right? Portability. Obviously, security is there. I think the biggest one might be cost, right? The spend that's tied to, to an overall um, budget that, that is resulting in, in cloud hosting. And a lot of our customers are implementing what's called chargebacks, right? So they're charging back the business unit for the hosting that, that they're doing. So you need to be able to have a bigger and clear, a bigger and clearer understanding of all this is from a from a visibility perspective to be able to gain and have control about what's happening um, in in the cloud. Now, oftentimes when I have this discussion with customers, they tell me, "Well, well hold on, you know, I'm actually using containers. Um, I'm okay. It doesn't really matter what cloud provider that I'm using. I'm I'm just going to go all in in this one." because I'm deploying uh, containers. Well, the thing about it is um, there, there's still a little bit of a nuance here. Now, I, I'm not one to say no containers. Gosh, that, that would be ridiculous. Yes, use containers. Yes, use use you know whatever technology that you're using to be able to do this. But the thing about it is, right, there's still virtual machines and and components that run within that in that container that need to be taken into consideration and that need to be taken into account as you're going through and building out that environment. So you can't really manage total contain all your containers generically if you've got some unique nuances that are set to the way that you want to build out the, the containers that, that you're utilizing. So what does that mean or what does that lead to? Well, it leads to you know almost a, an old school strategy of having a good documentation or plan put together on the way that you're going to build out your multi. Right? You really have to have a good strategy to define, and you have to document that strategy well, um, and have you know alignment and visibility into the strategy that you're building. So no longer is it that you're going to be multi-cloud or secure, or multi-cloud or cost-effective, or multi-cloud or visible, or multi-cloud or abstracted. It's all about and, right? You're going to have a multi-cloud environment, and you're going to be secure, and you're going to be cost-effective, and you're going to be compliant, and you're going to be you know, abstracted, and you're going to have visibility, right? And those are what and where and how we get to. Now, the good news is you've got the capacity to have some resources that are tied to things um, with what's called the the um, best practices or well-architected framework that's that's tied to something. The cloud providers give you the capacity to go through and have and utilize the best practices framework that they that they offer in order to give you a good place to start, right? So if you're using your cloud provider, they'll give you sort of that, that higher, architected, higher architected plan to help you start or at least base something off of a good set of best of fundamental practices. The other good thing about that is that multiple cloud providers also are adhering to the same set of standards. So whether you're using the well-architected well framework in, in AWS, or whether you're using the well architecture framework in Azure, or whether you're using the well architecture framework as provided or as defined, quote, air quotes that I'm doing here, um, by Google, um, you've got a, a set of guidelines and expertise to help you build out your strategy, right? So Google's got a security first best practice. AWS has a security minded pillar. Um, 
Azure has a security focused pillar as it relates to their best practice architecture, right? So you're not going through this and doing this alone. You've already got a fundamental or foundational guide on how to build out your environment and your architecture. So what did we see, right? And obviously we're a security company, so I'm gonna do some focuses on security challenges. The head fake here is that we're not necessarily actually seeing a difference, be it cloud that you're utilizing, right? So whether you're using Azure, whether you're using GCP, whether you're using, you're using AWS, we're still seeing issues as it relates to your storage. We're still seeing issues as it relates to PKI, right? Your, your key management. We're still seeing the same issues as it relates to logging, identity access management, right? So permissions, validation, those sorts of things. They're still seeing the same set of issues, right? And we actually have a report that, that we came out with mid-year, and Ron, I'll share it with you so that you can share it with your viewers. I wasn't able to chat it in the, in the chat window. Uh, but we actually have some a report that, that we do at the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year, at the end of the year that talks about, you know, hey, kind of our vulnerabilities, what we're seeing, trends in the security industry, how this is all going. And we're still seeing the same, you know, set of, of issues regardless of the cloud provider that you're utilizing. So what that means is, our customers aren't using the best practices that are set out via the, the cloud providers. And as Ron said at the beginning, there's, you know, the, the cloud providers aren't able to do it all. And when you're using a multi-cloud setup, you're not able to have visibility across the clouds um, because your one cloud provider isn't gonna give you visibility into your other cloud provider, right? That just doesn't necessarily happen or happen easily unless you've got some sort of intermediary software or some sort of intermediary step to have that control, to have that visibility. So you know, each cloud has its own framework. You've got to get that visibility built into things and you've got to have the expertise that's needed or tied to what you're seeing to be able to interpret what you're seeing and implement it correctly and be able to go out and, and build it correctly. So let's talk a little bit about just a, a generic applications journey, right? And and whether or not this be in, you know, kind of any cloud that, that, that you're, you're building this in, what we're finding is from a shared responsibility model perspective, regardless of what onus is put on you as a customer, um, you're, you're, you will mess something up. I mean, basically is what it just comes down to, right? And it's not just me that's saying this, you know, Gartner says this. And it's not just Gartner that's saying it, the NSA says this, right? So, so three letter agencies that, that investigate fraud, crime, uh, <laughs> breaches, um, can come out and say, hey, you're gonna screw up the, the implementation or the configuration of your cloud environment. And if you think about why that is, it makes sense. Right? It, it makes sense because there's so many different teams building. They're building in, a, in an agile, in a very quick, high velocity environment that's encouraged to release and release and release all the time, right? And so when you're configuring that, or they're building off of you know old templates, you're using an old Terraform template, you're using an old outdated cloud formation template that's just been you know the way that you've done things for year over year. And when you do that, um, you've got a recipe for disaster, right? You've got, you've got a, an issue where you're going to have, throughout 2023, 99% of cloud security failures be the customer's fault, right? And that's not just me saying that. It is Gartner, it is Trend, and it is the NSA, right? And so what ends up happening, right, is because you've got that rapid growth, because you've got you know, a lack or, or set of issues that are, that are tied to those misconfigured templates, that are tied that lead to issues with, with the, your containers, that lead to storage related issues, that lead to you know, PKI or a, a lack of, of functionality and visibility that's tied to that. You need to have something that gives you that sort of central visibility that allows you to have the multi-cloud view and give you a set of automated controls that, that works well kind of across all of that. Regardless of how you do this, you know, it is a need uh, that, that you have. The other thing that we recommend is to integrate your controls or your visibility that you have here into the way in which you develop. And this is important because I'm actually, notice that I put DevOps here and not Dev SEC, DevSecOps here, uh, because I'm actually a proponent of security simply just being woven into DevOps, right? And when you do that correctly, and you do that as part of the development process, not as a gate, not as a speed bump, not as something that, that's, that's designed to derail or slow down the velocity of DevOps or the building, 
But when you weave it into the overall process, you get a much more refined and much more resilient and much more, I'll say, compliant and secure and visible and cost-effective sort of environment that's being built time and time again across across your, your whole organization. And so here, you know, I've got an example using you know, GitHub and Jenkins and, and sort of, of our solution set. And as it weaves in, the point is, as you've got the, the components into your integration tools and your development environments, um, you're able to, to have a set of properly configured and properly built out environments. The other thing, right, as you're going through and building this out is that your organization might have some compliance needs. Now, your organization might not have any compliance needs, but it's probably in your best interest to align to the compliance needs of a certain framework um, because on top of the shared responsibility model, on top of the best practices of the well-architected framework, these compliance frameworks give you an insight or an eye into what you need to do correctly or at least the future of where security is going um, so that your organization can and will um, make, make uh, so a, a application and environment that's based on best practices and has you know, something, something sort of taken care of. The other thing that you wanna do, remember if I go back to this slide, right? We wanna integrate into DevOps, right? So we want to put our processes or what we're building into the technologies and the way that your team is building, right? So if there are certain services that we can use, if there are third party services that we can integrate with, um, that's where we wanna go. So imagine you're a developer, you get a JIRA ticket that come across, comes across your desk, your JIRA ticket says do this. All the developer does is think of it as a bug. The developer goes and squash the bug, the build coordinator submits and approves the build to move forward, right? And that's really what we wanna get after and really what we wanna go to. We want to use the, the terminologies and the technologies that, that our developers are, are building. And when you do that, right, when you build and weave in security, build and weave in the best practices of visibility and abstraction across the way that you're developing, you get a much more compliant and much more, much less risk averse organization, application, and environment across all your clouds. Now that's important, right? So whether or not this be an implementation in something that is in one cloud, on on-prem, in hybrid, or in three clouds, or in five clouds, when you have that central visibility, you are able to make something much, much more risk averse and have the risk managed. There's no such thing as zero risk. We're only going after kind of the managed risk that, that's here, right? And so what Trend Micro does is we offer a, a, a solution set called Cloud One. Cloud One allows you to have complete visibility across your clouds, your multi-cloud environment, across a, a set of, of various services. And I, I kind of liken this onto the old, you know, OSI model, right? You're, you're, you've got application functionality, you know, layer seven. You've got network functionality that's layer two, layer three, right? You've got workloads. You've got containers that are being built there that's layer four or five, five or six sort of sort of thing, right? And so what Cloud One allows you to do is, is go across your whole stack, right? You have the visibility that, that is related to the components of the cloud, also dealing with the configuration of that cloud, right? So this, this wedge that I have highlighted here is the conformity piece of Cloud One, and that deals with all the configuration of, of the cloud, right? So be it the network zone that, that you're building it, be it the application that, that, that you're containing it, that, that you're creating, be it the, the um, the node or the the workloads that, that you're that you're putting into environment what conformity does is give you the cross cloud visibility into you know what's being built how it's being built if it's being built correctly and if it's being built as as part of a better set of standards or, or frameworks of what you're trying to accomplish and that's very important right because this is what gives you the kind of the cross uh, cross cloud visibility complete ability to do compliance, remediation steps that are tied to it, and integration into the way that DevOps happens. And when you do and when you accomplish that, right, you get to the point where you're truly integrating into DevOps. And notice that I separated the words security and DevOps. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this again, right? Because in, in my belief or, or the way that, that we do things, it's not DevSec, SEC, Ops. It's DevOps. 
And security is simply a part of DevOps. The way that applications are deployed, the way that agile development happens, the way in which a developer does her or his development should be with security in mind, right? And when you have that and you're able to have that visibility and tie it to best practice frameworks and align it to the way that your organization wants to, to run, that's truly the best way to attain um, success and have a more cost-effective, compliant, abstractable, and visible sort of multi-cloud strategy. Um, we do have the capacity for you. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say that that we do have the capacity for you to go through and, and test this out for yourself. Don't just you know, trust but verify, right? Don't just believe me. Take some time to to test this out. So. Um, you're able to use uh, this this component of Cloud One is the is that conformity piece right that little wedge that does the configuration view of of how you're building out your environment. Plug this in, go and see what's happening across your cloud environments. Go and see how your posture, how your your environment aligns to various compliance frameworks or best practice frameworks, um, and you're kind of able to to go through it and do that. And we'll even go through and you know kind of give you uh, assessment reports that are that are sort of tied to that. So Ron,